Disclaimer. This YouTube channel does not claim ownership to any reference materials compiled, used and uploaded. The lecture notes and questionnaires researched from various resources and test bank foundations are not in any way or any form influenced by PRC. The intent of the video is to support future licensed professionals who choose to review online, in their journey towards their respective board examinations. So for tonight we will have general education in science. So since science is divided into, let's say, four categories, we have biology, chemistry, physics, uh, and earth science or integrated science. For today, we will have the first two, biological and earth sciences. And then for tomorrow, we will have chemistry and physics. So today we will be using uh, practice test type so I want you to bring out a clean sheet of paper and then number your paper 1 to 50 or 1 to 70 depending kung saan tayo aabot sa time and then as we or as you check your own work we will try to to analyze or rationalize the answer okay so I'll be posting or showing the question, then you uh, answer, and afterwards you reveal the correct answer and rationalize. So in that way, as if we are also discussing the different uh, concepts, different topics behind those or that particular question. So hopefully all these questions will, will encompass or will cover uh, all concepts in biology and earth sciences okay so <clears throat> let's start one which of the following steps is not a part of the scientific method so it's not a part yet it's not a part of the scientific method interview resource persons in order to collect possible data make a guess about the answer to the problem and predict what will happen identify and state the problem perform the experiment to test prediction <clears throat> done you check your own work huh? then afterwards we will also count and then report to me your scores so that we can post kung ano yung my scores po ninyo. okay correct answer is so it's not a part of the scientific method the basic steps correct answer is letter a because uh interviewing resource person is not a part of the basic steps in scientific method Although it can be used, uh, it can be used to, or in some scientific studies, like in research. Letter B, make a guess that is formulation of hypothesis. C, that is about the problem, and then D is experimentation. So these three are included in the basic steps in solving problem. <clears throat> like this one so the steps in scientific method we have first you pose the question ask a question identify the problem afterwards formulate the hypothesis and then design the experiment then logical reasoning to test the hypothesis and last is formulation of theory or conclusion okay so did you get the correct answer next let's proceed number two which of the following statements does a scientist consider or always consider a accurate observations are necessary to organize problems b predictions do not point the way to possible solutions to problems c graphs 
are not useful in interpreting data. D. Experiments provide information that will always support prediction. Jot down your answers. Okay. Correct answer is <clears throat> D. Experiments provide information that will always support prediction. Okay, because you know, experimentation, this is the most important step in scientific method. Because the results of the experiment or the information provided by the experiment will answer the problem. And sometimes it will prove or disprove the hypothesis that you formulated. Okay? Kaya for scientists, they always consider experimentation. Okay? You have to take note of that. In, in scientific method, <clears throat> most important step is experimentation. Next, three. What is the importance of having a control set up in any scientific investigation? A. It will identify the variables in the experiment. It will provide basis for comparison between treated and untreated subjects. It will provide a basis for measuring data. And D. It will eliminate mechanical errors and experimentation. So when we say control set up, <coughs> Meron yung control and uncontrolled. What is the purpose of that? What's the importance in any scientific investigation? Okay, done. Baka sabihin nyo, so hindi pa kami nakakapag-analyze. In every question, usually dapat ano lang, less than a minute. Okay. The correct answer is letter B. Kaya nga may control set up, diba? Para just to, to, to compare the treated and untreated subjects. Para makita mo yung comparison. For example, nag, nag experiment ka. Ah... Uh, Yung isa, my fertilizer. Yung isa, wala. So, yung wala, yun yung control setup. Okay? Or either, pwede rin yung isa, yung my fertilizer. Para makita mo yung effect. Ano kaya yung effect kung may fertilizer? Ano kaya yung effect kung merong fertilizer in terms of the growth of plants? Ganon yun. Okay? So, <clears throat> letter B is the correct answer because a control setup, again, is one where the manipulated variables or let's say the factors in an experiment are changed or removed and for this matter the results in the control setup serve as your ayun, provide basis of comparison between the treated and untreated subjects so correct answer is letter b next let's proceed <clears throat> Which among these measurements is the comparison between the quantity to be measured and its corresponding standard in measurement of or measuring length? Meter, mass, ruler, liter. Correct answer is, siyempre, in terms of length, Pwede ang meter, pwede ang ruler. So, dalawa lang ang choices mo dyan. Hindi naman pwede ang mass, hindi naman pwede ang liter. So, the correct answer is A, meter. Kasi nga, di ba, kung maalala nyo yung SI-based units, yung International System of Measurement, length is one of the fundamental quantities. Uh, 
squared. Yung seven fundamental quantities at ayan. <coughs> diba? So, length is one of the fundamental quantities. The fundamental unit of measuring length is meter. And the, the standard device used in measuring length is the meter stick. Okay, kaya nga meter, one meter, meter, so that is with the use of meter stick. So, recalling the SI base units for mass, grams ang unit. For time, second, ang gagamitin. Electric current, we have ampere. For temperature, Kelvin. Hindi siya Celsius, hindi siya Fahrenheit. And then the amount of substance, we have mole. And the intensity of light is CD or candela. Okay? So, that, those are the seven fundamental uh, <clears throat> of measurement fundamental units so next number five the process of comparing one quantity with the corresponding standard is called ayan dapat nauna to kanina <laughs> pag may comparison of quantities we call it letter A measurement Okay, for example, parang yung first kanina, like if we wish to measure the length of the table, we use a meter stick. So, which is supposed to be the standard for measuring length. We then, after that, we then compare the length of the table with the length of the meter stick. Or you will be able to identify the length of the table by means of using the meter stick. Okay, so that is letter A, measurement. Six. So far, correct pa, nakukuha nyo lahat. Five over five. Now we are in number six. Which of the following relationship is correct? A meter is less than a kilometer. A second is more than a minute. A centigram is equal to milligram. A decimeter is greater than a decameter. So, surely, yung letter B, yun yung i-scrap nyo kasi alam nyo naman na yung second is less than a minute. Pero, yung A, C, and D, saan kaya doon ang correct? Okay. Answer, letter A. <clears throat> okay? A meter is less than a kilometer. Now, what is this concept all about? Ito na yung, if you recall your concept of uh, yung dimensional analysis, yung ladder of conversion. Ito yung base units na gagamitin for example meter liter grams ano pa meter liter grams yeah yung tatlong yon so habang pababa paliit habang pataas palaki so si base unit na meter is less than decameter si decameter less than hectometer hectometer is less than kilometer Pero si meter na base or liter or grams is uh, bigger than decimeter, bigger than centimeter, bigger than millimeter. Example, 1 meter dito, nasa base ang meter. Siyempre, yung isang metro, mas malaki siya kaysa kay centimeter. Mas malaki din siya kaysa kay millimeter. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's also refresh with uh, uh, SI prefixes. Pag deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, pataas na yan. Yung negative yun, ibig sabihin, mali mas maliliit siya kaysa sa base units, di ba? Yung base. Pero dito, mas mataas. 
like uh, one decameter is I uh, one meet one decameter is 10 meters one hectometer is 100 meter one kilometer is 1000 meters your exponent these are number of zeros eto din number of zeros pero less than one <coughs> yung point zero 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 pero if we are dealing with the base units naalala nyo pa ba ito yung prefixes for example, magko-convert ka ng kilometer to centimeters. Kilometer to centimeters. Ayan. Kilo papunta doon sa centi. So, use the dimensional analysis in converting units from one unit to another. Do you need example for this? For example, let's say yun, at uh, 2 kilometers, convert natin siya sa ilang, ilang millimeter kaya yun. So, from here, si kilo, punta ka muna dito sa base, kilo, base, tapos tsaka ka pumunta kay mili. So, 2 kilometers times ang base mo ay lagay mo sa dito yung kilometer para ma-cancel ma mo mamaya. So, sulat mo ito yung base na meter. So, ilang meters meron ang kilometer? Ilang zeros? Ayan, tatlo. So, ibig sabihin, 1 thousand meters times ilagay mo naman si meter dito sa baba tapos yung hinahanap natin desired <coughs> which is millimeters now si meter mas malaki siya kay millimeters correct so this is one okay. so ilang zeros tatlo so, 1,000 meters. Then, just multiply. Ilang zeros ba? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, the correct answer is 2, tapos 6 na zeros. Kasi, 2 times 1,000 times 1,000. So, ikakancel ko lang si kilometer. Kilometer meter meter ang natitirang unit is millimeter yun yung hinahanap natin so 2 kilometers is equal to 2 million millimeters ganyan yung pag convert kaya ako alam mo ito madali let's say for example ko convert ka naman ng atometer papuntang yota meter or grams atograms toyota grams so yung grams nandito sa gitna so from ato punta ka muna kay grams then punta ka kay yota grams ganun yun so basta isipin mo lagi mas maliit dito mas malaki dito ito yung gitna yung base units so kung 1 dito 1 gram 1 and then 24 zeros na yoktograms. 1 gram is 1 and then isang zero na decigram. 1 gram is 1,000 milligram kasi 3 zeros. 1 gram is 1 million micrograms kasi 6 na zeros. Pero pag dito naman sa kabila, hindi. Si gram naman ang maliit. <clears throat> Limbawa, 1 mega gram is 1 mega gram is 1 million grams. So, ito si grams. Mas maliit siya. Okay? Gets? Let's proceed. Next. 7. The science that deals with the physical aspects of the earth is called 
Voilà. What's the correct answer? Physical aspects of the earth. Siyempre, the correct answer is earth science. Kasi ang earth science, yung letter B naman is physical science. Earth science is one of the branches of physical science. Kaya diba, ang, ang science major dati is physical science, biological science. So, ang physical science, yun yung mga physics, chemistry, earth science, kasama siya. So, it deals with the physical aspects of the earth, except the biological concept. Kaya hindi, earth science lang siya. Geology, <coughs> geo means the earth. Iba naman yung geology. Yung study niya yung... <coughs> Ano ang, ano ang ibig sabihin ng ano ang uh, geology? Geology, it, it studies the earth. Pero pag physical aspect, lahat ng physical aspects ng earth is earth science. Okay? Now, ano naman yung pet, ano tang letter D? Petrology. What is petrology? <coughs> the study of rocks, uh, Components of rocks, yung mga igneous, metamorphic, sedimentary rocks, and all the processes that form rocks, all the processes that transform rocks. So, yun yung petrology as a science. Next. The astronomer who developed the theory that the sun is the center of the solar system was... A. Newton, Einstein, Ptolemy, Copernicus. Answer. Magsagot kayo ha. Bibilangin nyo mamaya ang score nyo. Then, i-report nyo po. Okay. Done? <clears throat> Correct answer is Copernicus. A. Letter D, Copernicus, because uh, it was Nicholas, Nicolaus, Copernicus, uh, he is a Polish astronomer during the 16th century. Okay? He enunciated the principle of heliocentric pa planetary motion. Heliocentric, ibig sabihin yung sun ang nasa center stating that the sun and not the earth was the center around which planets revolve. Kasi, nung una, si ito, si letter C, si Ptolemy, siya yung una nagbigay kasi ng theory. Ano ang sabi ni Ptolemy? Sabi niya noon, the earth is the center around which other celestial bodies, including the sun, revolve. Yung sabi niya. Okay, so kinontra yan ni Copernicus. Sabi niya, no, hindi yung, hindi yung earth ang iniikutan. Instead, sun. Sun is the center. So, letter D, Copernicus. Si Newton and Einstein, syempre, ano, sila yung mga sumunod na eh. More on ano na sila. <coughs> specifics na sila like law of gravitational I mean gravity I mean universal gravitation relativity and so on <coughs> so nakaka 8 score na ba kayo next number 9 the earth's rotation on its axis gave rise to the occurrence of day and night what would happen if the Earth's axis is not tilted? Tilted means medyo tilt. Yung hindi siya naka-straight. Medyo nag siya. Konti. Ganon. A. Some places would just have day and time, while others only night time. Some places would have very long nights. Others would have short days. Letter C. The days and nights throughout the globe would always be equal length. And letter D, 
the length of day and night will just be the same as when the axis is tilted. <coughs> so, ano nga daw ang mangyayari if the earth is not tilted? Let's check. Correct answer is letter C. Di ba sa first sentence sabi niya, yung earth's rotation and its axis gave rise to the occurrence of day and night. Bakit may day and night? Kasi nag-rotate siya. Pero paano kaya kung hindi tilted ang rotation? So in, pag hindi tilted, they will have they will be of equal length ang day and night. Correct? So uh, since the earth is tilted as it uh, rotates on its axis, longer daytime of course in the northern hemisphere during the summer. Di ba, hindi nyo man naalata nun pag summer ang haba ng araw. Pero, long, uh, ano naman, ang longer night pag winter. Shorter day naman pag winter. That is, if the, if the Earth's axis is <clears throat> tilted. Now, if the Earth's axis is not tilted, all parts of the Earth will be receiving equal amount of light from the sun okay and so the days and nights throughout the globe will always be equal in length ito yung uh, ano siya na tilt siya ng 23.45 degrees kaya hindi equal may mga araw na pag etong mga places dito during summer mahaba Longer, uh, longer days, shorter night. Mga ganon. Okay? So, pag hindi siya tilted, equal. I ibig sabihin ng equal, 24, I mean, 12 hours uh, daytime, 24 hours, I mean, 12 hours night time equal na equal yon to form 24 hours that is one day next number 10 <clears throat> how many phases does the moon pass during one complete revolution around the earth three four six eight so take note ha huh? Si moon nag-revolve around the earth. So, revolve means umiikot siya. Yung rotation naman, umiikot siya sa sarili niya. So, that's the, uh, the <coughs> difference between rotation and revolution. So, ilang phases of the moon? Correct answer is... D, letter, I mean, eight phases. Okay, let's take a look at the phases of the moon. <clears throat> Yan. So, during one apparent revolution around the earth, so, umiikot si moon around the earth in every 29 and a half days, the moon passes through these eight various phases. From, from one complete darkness to complete light, and then back to complete darkness. So, <clears throat> eto, pag new moon, complete dark siya. Okay? Then, waxing crescent. Ang waxing means becoming larger. Okay? Yung kabila naman ay waning. Pag waning naman, paliit. Paliit yung yung nakikita, yung visible part. Waxing crescent and then first quarter. First quarter, yan naman yung kalahati siya. And then, <clears throat> waxing gibbous and then full moon na siya. Full moon, makikita mo na yung buong 
buwan. And then paliit ulit siya. That is, I mean, paliit naman siya. So we call it wani. Waning gibos. Then third quarter. Then waning crescent. And then balik ulit siya sa new moon. Okay? So, yan yung eight phases ng, uh, I mean, phases of the moon. Okay, out of 10, i-comment nyo nga yung score nyo. <coughs> Let me see kung may nakikinig. Oh, akala ko perfect nyo na. 6, 5. Lesson nyo ito nung first year high school. <laughs> diba? <laughs> Sabagay sobrang tagal na kasi Oh, okay. Anyhow, let's go. Let's proceed. So, it's maganda rin pag ganito na nag-recall nag, nag talaga kayo, no? Para hindi, <clears throat> kahit siguro basa kayo ng basa ng mga iba't ibang materials, kung wala naman ito, hindi nyo talaga ma-recall. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Number 11. <clears throat> what planet is closest to the Earth and with a distance of about 42 million kilometers? Mars, Venus, Mercury, Jupiter. Closest to the Earth. Okay. Let's check. Correct answer is Mars. Let's see. <coughs> Ayan. So, ang choice mo dyan is either Mars or <coughs> Mars or Venus. Kasi nasa gitna nila yung Earth. Diba? Oh, diba meron tayong mnemonic dito sa para ma-recall ma ma mo yung arrangement ng planets from the Sun. Mars, I mean Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Etong first four, uh, ito yung mga, I mean tong last four from Jupiter to ano, sila yung mga giant planets, terrestrial planets, kasi mostly mga ice, uh, <coughs> baga, walang atmosphere. So we have here para ma memorize. My very energetic mother just serve us noodles. Okay? My very energetic mother just serve us noodles. Para ma-memorize niyo yung arrangement ng planets in the solar system. Okay? So, di ba, ang pipilian nyo ay Venus and Mars. <coughs> so, of the three neighbor planets of the Earth, Mars is the one closest to the Earth. Kasi ano lang siya, 35, uh, 42 million kilometers. Yung ano kasi, yung Venus. Ito, Venus kasi is 38 million miles. So that is already 61 kilometers distant. Okay, 61 kilometers. E 42 kilometers lang yung agwat ni Earth and Mars. Okay. So, ang nearest sa planet Earth, kung saan yung question is Mars. Okay? <clears throat> Kanda nyo yun. From the sun, meron kayo nun, my very energetic mother just serve us noodles. Twelve. What term is given to the surface of the Earth between the Tropic of Cancer and the Equator? Great Circle, Meridian, Zone, Solstice. Okay, correct answer is <coughs> Zone. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Ito kasi yung Earth. Ang Arctic Circle dito, 
Antarctic. Antarctic naman sa baba. North Pole, South Pole. Siyempre, sa gitna is the equator. So, sa, sa north, Tropic of Cancer. Sa baba, Tropic of Capricorn. So, the region dito, between the equator and the Tropic of uh, <coughs> Cancer, we call it zones. May mga iba-ibang zones pa yan. Because, uh, bakit may, ano yung purpose ng mga zones? Depende kasi sa climate, sa latitude. And in some cases, a zone can be identified as the surface of the earth between two adjacent circles then. So, nakategorize sa in two zones. 13. <clears throat> O, oh, alam niyo to. The greatest number of storm casualties during Super Typhoon Yolanda was caused by strong winds, high rainfall, storm surge, low pressure. Bakit maraming namatay daw nung Yolanda? Eh, di ba, hindi naman na rin anticipate yun na lumakas pala yun na bagyo. Tapos, Wala namang masyadong ulan, pero bakit maraming namatay? Because of <coughs> letter C, storm surge. Yung biglaang ano, <coughs> uh, tumaas yung, yung sa dagat, yun yung, yung, yung reason kung bakit maraming namatay. A storm surge is a flood of ocean or seawater that accompanies the typhoon. Kasi noon, very confident kasi hindi masyadong malakas ang hangin. Wala masyadong malakas na ulan. Pero it is uh, announced as a super typhoon. ba? Pero hindi na-anticipate yung storm surge. Biglang tumaas yung tubig sa dagat. That's why it is considered as the most devastating feature of a typhoon that strikes the coastal areas sa mga malapit sa dagat. Okay? Saan, saan, ba, saan na ba ang, ang sentro ng Typhoon Yolanda? Sa Tacloban later, right? Uh, the height of typhoon. Uh, ang nangyari o noon? Diba ito yung may international name na Haiyan? Okay? But it is known in the Philippines as Super Typhoon Yolanda, one of the most powerful tropical cyclones ever recorded. That was in 2013. 2013. So noon, ang fatalities na report as 6,000 plus 6,300. Pero pinastop na nila ang counting noon. Pero syempre, madami, <coughs> madami pa na ang mga hindi na ibilang. Kaya na pina-stop na nila. So, na-reach lang yan ng 6,000. Pero sabi nila, more than that, baka kalahati pa or dumobli pa. Okay? So, yun yung reason. Storm surge. Letter C. 14. The history of the Earth has been divided by scientists into eras. Which of the following shows the arrangement of these eras into the proper sequence from oldest to the most recent? So, <clears throat> pag ganitong choices, makikita mo na kaagad yung dalawang pagpipilian. From the word pre-Cambrian, ibig sabihin pre-before. So, either A or C ang pagpipilian nyo dyan. Okay. Let's check. Check your paper. Correct answer is letter A. Now, let's, let's talk, uh, take a look at the... Ano, <coughs> We call this a geologic timetable or geologic time scale. So, <clears throat> this is a theory, okay? So, Precambrian period, 4.6 billion, 541 million years ago. 
Okay. <clears throat> so in a geologic timetable, it was theorized that the earth was formed out of nothing. So during the Precambrian era, it is described to be that the earth is void, no water, no air, nothing existed. Okay. So sumunod sa Precambrian, ito na, Paleozoic era. Then yung Cambrian period. Dito naman sa Paleozoic era, nagkaroon na ng unicellular organisms. They started to exist. Unicellular, so ito lang, itong mga organisms na ito. Okay? And then, Mesozoic era. Ito yung era ng mga <coughs> dinosaurs. Mesozoic era. Jurassic period, ito. Kaya, uh, kung may mga questions doon regarding Jurassic uh, period, that is during the Meso Mesozoic era. Kaya nga biglang naglaho daw ang mga, mga tawag doon, mga dinosaurs. Kasi uh, one theory, may malaking meteors or comets na napunta sa Earth. Kaya na ano sila, na wash out. And then, eto na tayo sa Xenozoic era. Okay, that's the latest era. Kung nasaan tayo. Kasi from 2.6 million years ago up to present. Yan yung <coughs> era of human beings. So, the Cenozoic era ang sa human beings. So, yan yung geologic time scale or geologic time table. Okay? If you have questions, just, ano, uh, bat in, okay? Or mag-chat. Next, 15. The star Alpha Centauri, which is considered as the closest star to our solar system, aside from the sun, of course, is about 4.7 light years away from the Earth. Yun yung layo niya. If the stars emit a beam of light, how long will it take the light to reach the Earth? Kasi pag pinag-uusapan na ay mga planets, mga sa, sa heavenly bodies, hindi na kasya ang kil, uh, miles away, kilometers away, hindi na kasya yun. Kasi sobrang layo. So ang measurement is what you call as light years. <coughs> okay? Now, sabi dito, yung Alpha Centauri na pinakamalapit sa Earth as a solar system, pag nag-emit siya ng beam of light, how long will it take that light to reach the Earth? Kung yun ay 4.7 light years away from the Earth. Correct answer is 4.7 years then. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, yung, yung light na inimit ng Alpha Centauri makakarating sa Earth after 4.7 years pa sa sobrang layo. <clears throat> e yung sun, pag nag, ano na, pag uh, nag, tawag doon, nag sunrise, kaagad makakarating. Diba? A light year is the distance traveled by light in one year. Kaya tinawag na light year. So, if a beam of light is emitted from the said star, that beam of light will reach the Earth after 4.7 light years. So, letter B. Okay? So, light year means <clears throat> light in one year. <clears throat> Sixteen. Read and answer. Which of the following is the main cause of seasonal changes? Bakit nagkakaroon ng seasonal changes? When you say seasonal changes, summer, winter, spring, summer, or fall, di ba? 
winter, summer, autumn, and so on. Distance of the Earth from the Sun, rotation of the Sun about the Earth, the revolution of the Earth around the Sun, the tilting of the Earth on its axis. So, looking at the choices, syempre, yung rotation of the sun, x na yun. Kasi hindi naman, hindi naman umiikot si sun. Answer. Letter. D. <coughs> the tilting of the earth on its axis. Yan. <coughs> Okay. The earth is still tilted. Sabi natin kayo na 23.45 degrees with the vertical as it revolves around the sun. So, <clears throat> uh, for this reason, there are times where uh, one hemisphere, northern, southern, receives greater light than the other. And that uh, cause seasonal change. So, dito... Pag December, winter sa part na to. March naman, pa-start ito ng summer, spring papuntang summer sa June, and then autumn papunta doon. Okay? So, the Earth revolution around the sun, especially its rotation, Kasi nag-rotate din siya habang nag-revolve sa sun. Pero yung tilting of the earth of the earth causes seasonal changes. Kaya nagkakaroon ng change na ganito. <coughs> so, letter D. 17. The vernal equinox is the time at which the Sun passes through this point about March 21, marking the beginning of what season in the northern hemisphere? Dito sa, at, sa hemisphere natin. Summer, autumn, winter, spring. O, kayong mga teachers, anong meron pag March, April dito? <coughs> Nagkakaroon kayo ng, tayo ng, Ano yung break na ino-observe in in pag March, April? We have the correct answer is letter D. Kaya ang tinawag na spring break. Kasi March 21 ang start usually ng spring. Okay? Kagaya nung pinakita ko kanina, ito. <clears throat> ito yung vernal equinox. Between March 20 to 21, Yan ang start ng spring. Okay? This is the time when both the northern and southern hemisphere receive the amount, same amount of sun, sunlight. Okay? So, and this time, of course, in March 20 or 21. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, when the sun passes through this point, it marks the beginning of spring in the, dito na, northern hemisphere. So, kaya meron tayong spring break. Ito naman, yung winter, winter solstice, usually December. Ayan, oh, December 21. Yan, nagwi-winter. Summer, June 21-22. Then, autumn. Then, winter. You know. Next, 18. When the Arctic Circle is experiencing 24 hours of darkness. O, oh, ito pa rin sa tilting ng, uh, yung rotation pa rin ng Earth, yan ah. Di ba yung Arctic Circle, yung sa taas, sa, sa North Pole. The sun is shining directly over the Kung total darkness, 24 hours ng darkness sa Arctic, saan naman yung total na daytime? <clears throat> 24 hours of daytime. Equator? Siyempre, hindi. Mali na yan. Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, Antarctic Circle. <clears throat> hmm. 
Hindi porke Arctic dito sa 24 hours, ang sagot nyo naman ay Antarctic Circle. Hindi ah, kasi nakatilt nga yung Earth eh. So, hindi siya equal. Correct answer is Tropic of Capricorn. Okay, let's go back to the example kanina. Ayan. Ito daw si Arctic Circle Total Dark. Susunod siya ang Tropic of Cancer, then Equator, Tropic of Capricorn, and Antarctic Circle. So, kahit hindi, hindi pwedeng ang Antarctic Circle kasi may ano siya dito. May dark, mayroong light. So, dito ka sa Tropic of Capricorn. Ito siya, o. Oh. Yan. So, 24 hours itong <coughs> araw. Buong, uh, buong, uh, wala silang gabi. Dito naman, walang araw. 24 hours na darkness. Okay? Especially dito sa may North Pole. Kasi, the Northern Hemisphere is receiving lesser amount of light. Okay? So, on the other hand, kabalik taran, if the sun is shining directly over the Tropic of Cancer, pag dito naman, yung Arctic Circle naman is uh, experiencing 24 hours of daytime naman. <coughs> pag nagbaliktad ito, pag nagbaliktad ito halimbawa, si Tropic of Cancer ay, uh, I mean, yes, Si Arctic naman ang magiging 24 hours of daytime. Si Cancer naman ang nighttime. Yan. Kaya ang nag-prepare yan, uh, Arctic Circle, ah, mali, Arctic Circle in Capricorn, Antarctic and Tropic of Cancer. Basta iniikot na ganyan. Okay. Yun yung ano kasi, bakit siya nag-tilt, kaya nagkakaroon ng mga ganyan. Or, eto, baka mas maintindihan nyo to. <coughs> like for example, pag December 21, uh, kung nasa Arctic Circle ka, dito, yan, Arctic Circle, Kung nasaan, kung nasaan si Santa Claus you would have experienced 24 hours of darkness 24 hours of yan, dito sa North Pole ito. 24 hours of darkness okay it is the day that the sun never uh, rises or it was the day the sun never rose However, if you live south of the Antarctic Circle, dito naman, Antarctic Circle, south <coughs> is part, you will have experienced 24 hours of daylight. So, makikita mo dyan na uh, hindi, hindi bumababa si sun. Hindi siya lumulubog, kumbaga. The sun never sets in. Okay? So, yan. Primarily because of the tilting of the earth. Nagi gets so far? <clears throat> Next, 19. Assuming, or oh, assuming, ha, that the revolution of the earth speeds up such that it its revolution takes place every 301 eight days. Every how many years will a leap year occur? Narinig nyo ba ang leap year na sinasabi? Di ba yung, yun yung pag, pagdagdag ng <coughs> ng tag doon? Yung kung ang birthday mo ay February 29, every how many years ka ba nagbo-birthday? Yun yung leap year. Kasi, 365 and one fourth days yung totoo pero eto assuming lang sabi niya okay ano yung answer <clears throat> every how many years daw magkakaroon ng leap year okay para analyze nyo 
ang totoong leap year is 365 and one fourth days. I mean, ang totoong number of days in one year. Kaya, every four years, kasi one fourth days eh. Pag one fourth days, ibig sabihin, 25-25% lang siya. So, kalangan mo ng apat na taon bago ka makabuo ng isang araw. Kaya, yung mga may birthday ng 29, February 29, Every four years lang sila nagbo-birthday. Kasi every four years lang nagkakaroon ng leap year. Okay? I guess. Now, paano daw ko assuming na may speeds up? 365 and 18 days. How, every how many years will a leap year occur? Sagot, every eight years. Kasi ang 18 Ilang ilang 18 ba ang mabubuo bago magkaroon ng isang buo? Walo, di ba? So, 8 years. So, a leap year will occur every 8 years. It, or it will take 8 years to make an additional 1 year out of 1 and a half <coughs> or 1 over 8 day. That is, 1 8 times 8 is equal to 1. Kuha. This is an assumption. Pero yung totoong leap year is every four years. Kailan ang next na leap year? Sino may birthday sa inyo ng February 29? Kailan ka ulit magbabirthday? Anong year? Walang may birthday sa inyo ng February 29? Ang next na birthday ng mga may birthday ng Feb 29 is sa 2024. <coughs> Kasi ka ba birthday lang nila noong 2020? Okay? Kaya pag Feb 29 ang birthday mo, it's either you will celebrate it on Feb 28 or March 1. Pag wala pang leap year. Okay? So I repeat, pag leap year na sinasabi, every 4 years. Bakit every 4 years? Kasi ang... <coughs> Bilang ng araw sa isang taon is 365 and 1 4 days. 365.25. Kaya 1 4. 1 4, 1 4, 1 4, 1 4. So, isa. Tagal, di ba? Kawawa naman yung mga birthday ng February 29. Okay? Interesting. 20. What phase of the moon is observed when it cannot be seen at all because it passes directly between the earth and the sun? O yung pinakita ko kanina, <clears throat> saan yung hindi mo makikita yung moon? We have letter, kabaliktaran ng full moon is letter A, new moon. Bakit? Kasi the moon is between the earth and the Sun. So, blocking the light from the sun. Thus, uh, during this phase, the moon is non-observable. Hindi mo makikita si moon. Because it is located between the earth and the sun. Kaya tinawag siyang new moon kasi pa-start siyang palaki. <coughs> Okay, another 10 points. Will you share your score? Mm -hmm. 6 over 10. Wala, wala pa nakakuha ng 10 over 10, 9 over 10. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan nyo mo ng review sa Earth Science. Okay. Next. 21. <clears throat> Although, siyempre, Earth Science, Biology, Chemistry, Physics, Astronomy. Kasama din sa Earth Science ang Astronomy. So, parang sa ano din, sa math, lahat ng yon kailangan mong reviewin, pero, you only have to expect 15 points. 
So, hindi mo alam kung saan manggagaling. Yun, baka mamaya, sampung puntos galing sa earth science. Isang puntos lang sa physics or apat na points lang sa chemistry. Walang biology. May mga ganong years sa LED. Like, noong 2019, sabi nila, sir, daming chemistry na lumabas. Eh, not, wala tayong choice kasi yun yung lumabas. Okay? Next, 21. Another 10, 10, 10, 10 tayo ha para mga natin. During solar eclipse, the earth is between the moon and the sun. The moon is between the earth and the sun. The sun is between the earth and the moon. The earth is behind the sun. Solar eclipse daw. Anong nangyayari pag solar eclipse? O, pag solar eclipse, ano bang tinitingnan natin? Anong meron sa ano? Anong nangyayari? Okay. Answer, letter <coughs> D. During the solar eclipse, the moon is between the earth and the sun. Wait, eto. Pag solar eclipse, yung moon nasa gitna. Okay? So, uh, during this event, the moon blocks the light coming from the sun. Eto. Si moon kasi ang nasa gitna eh, kaya binablock niya yung galing sa sun. Di ba pag solar eclipse, nakikita nyo lang itim. Itim ba yung nakikita? Kasi binablock niya yung light. Kaya, uh, nagka-cast siya ng shadow sa earth. Okay? I repeat, the moon is in between the sun and the earth. Kaya, wala tayong nakikitang light. Primarily because, binablock ni moon si sun. So, full shadow ang nakikita natin. Okay? Whereas, pag lunar eclipse naman, sa gabi, the earth is between the moon and the sun. Eto naman siya. The earth naman ang nasa gitna. Okay? Solar, si moon ang nasa gitna. Lunar, si earth ang nasa gitna. Dito naman, hindi mo makikita si moon. Kasi, binablock din siya ni Earth. Twenty-two. Which of the following is not a mineral? Okay, answer. <coughs> Hindi daw siya mineral. Correct answer is A. Pearl. Pearl because it is solid and organic. Bakit siya hindi mineral? Kasi one of the general characteristics of a mineral is it should be inorganic. Okay? When you say inorganic, hindi dapat siya nakuha from living things. Okay? Uh, it, it is not derived from living things. So, pearl is not a mineral kasi sabi dito, organic siya. Paano siya naging organic? Kasi galing siya sa oysters. Galing siya sa oysters. So, I repeat, Ang isang karakteristik ng mineral is it should be inorganic. Inorganic. <clears throat> hindi dapat, I mean, hindi dapat siya galing sa, hindi dapat siya na-derive from living things. Etong pearl kasi galing sa sa oyster. 
oyster is a living thing, di ba? So, eh, naging organic siya. That's why topaz, quartz, and gold are <clears throat> minerals. Twenty-three. While digging the ground, a man found a well-preserved fossil of an organism in a broken rock. So, nakita daw siya ng fossil sa broken rock. So, uh, this rock is most likely what type of rocks? Igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic, or volcanic tuff? Volcanic tuff yung, siyempre, mga galing sa eruption. <clears throat> Answer. B. Sedimentary rocks. Let's take a look at the rock cycle. Yan. <clears throat> so, syempre, saan ba nagagaling lahat sa vulca volcanic eruption? Mostly. So, <clears throat> lahat ng mga lumalabas galing sa volcanic eruption are igneous rocks. So, after uh, some processes of weathering, lithification, nagiging sedimenta, sediments muna. So, after few years, pag na-compact na siya, na cement, nagiging sedimentary rock. So, dito nakabaon mostly ang mga fossils sa sedimentary rocks. Because sedimentary rocks are formed out of eto sediments in water and other forms so there is a great possibility na yung fossil na nahukay niya ay na embed dito sa sedimentary rocks kasi dito lang merong na embed yan and then uh, after heat and pressure after few years nagiging metamorphic rocks siya nagiging metamorphic rocks and then, back to, ano naman, ilalabas na naman siya ng volcano. Kasi nasa ano naman siya, loob. So, igneous, sediment, sedimentary rocks, metamorphic. 
3 to 400 millions of years ago sa ocean. Lahat ng yan, yung mga remnants, yung mga uh, remains ng microorganisms or organisms. <clears throat> yan, na bury. They were buried deeper and deeper. Kasi nga, syempre, kung mantakin mo 50 to 100 millions of years ago, nabuburied sila deeper and deeper. So, due to enormous heat and pressure, they uh, turned them into oil and gas. That's why ngayon, we drill down through layers of sand, silt, rock, just to reach the rock formations that contain oil and gas deposits. Kaya nag-drill yan, mga oil companies. Okay? <clears throat> 25. All of the following are examples of soil conservation except contour flow flowing, overgrazing, Crop rotation, terracing. Plowing siguro to, hindi sa flowing. Kung titignan mo naman ito, isa lang ang negative. You know, over, overgrazing. Sobrang pagpapakain, kumbaga. Kinukuha mo yung... <clears throat> so the correct answer here is letter B. When we say overgrazing, grass, the grass, including the roots, are eaten by the animals feeding on the grass. Kaya, so, when there are no more roots to hold the soil, then the soil becomes prone to erosion. Kaya, overgrazing is not an example of soil conservation. Twenty-six. Which of the following reasons is not true as why terraces are built in mountain province? Especially yung Banawe rice terraces. To accommodate excess run of water, to provide space for planting rice, to make the place beautiful, to provide steps for the natives to go uphill. Answer... C, to make the place beautiful. Did you know that terraces, especially yung Banawi rice terraces, are built in mountain province because of ito, to accommodate excess run of water. Pag ma mas maraming masyadong tubig sa taas, di ba, pababa na yan. Sharing, sharing yan ng tubig. To provide space for planting rice, which is correct. What else? To provide steps for the natives to go uphill para makaakyat sila sa taas. But not, uh, the people in Mountain Province did not dream making the terraces beautiful. Hindi yun ang purpose nila. Okay? So, 26 not true is letter C. <coughs> 27. The prevailing wind systems experienced in the Philippines are oh, sino sa inyo ang laging nanonood ng news especially sa mga weather forecast. Ano yung dalawang sina, laging minimension na na wind systems natin? Especially pag summer, pag rainy season, ano yung mga wind system? Di ba naririnig niyo yung monsoon? Yung habagat, amihan. So, saan dyan si habagat? Saan dyan si amihan?
Let's check. Letter B. The prevailing wind systems in the Philippines are ito. Si Northeast Monsoon or si Hanging Amihan. Ito, pag ganun siya, pababa. And then, si Hanging Habagat naman, Southwest Monsoon. Ito naman siya, pataas na ganyan. Kaya ba diba, pag weather forecast, tinuturo dyan na ito, pag ganun. Tapos, pababa, pag ganyan yung ikot ng wind. <coughs> Movement of air or the wind system. Okay? So, north is monsoon, siya si hanging amihan. Southwest monsoon yung hanging habagat. Okay, next. Oh, biology na ito. <coughs> Prokaryotic cells are different from eukaryotic cells because prokaryotes have Answer. Letter A. <clears throat> no ba ang prokaryotes and eukaryotic cells? Okay. Pag prokaryotic, sila yung mga bacteria. Okay? Wala silang nucleus. Wala silang true nucleus. Si eukaryotic, sila yung plants, animals, fungi, protists. Eukaryotic cells have true nucleus. Ito, sa gitna. Okay? And uh, etong prokaryotic, they don't, they, don't, uh, they don't have the membrane-bound organelles like wala silang mitochondria and other organelles. So, since walang nucleus, ang prokaryotic cell, the nucleic acid and the genome are not evident in the cells. So, wala silang mga DNA. Okay? However, prokaryotes have small ribosomes. Ito. Meron silang ribosomes. Itong nasa loob. That use, that are used in protein synthesis. Kasi kailangan din nilang mag-tribe. Okay? So, I repeat, prokaryotic cells have ribosomes, small ribosomes used for protein synthesis. Okay? So, yan yung pagkakaiba. Prokaryotic, walang nucleus. Eukaryotic, merong nucleus ang kanilang cell. Twenty-nine. What type of fungus is used in making alcoholic drinks and help prepare a dough in baking? Oh, sa mga nagbibake dyan. Ano yung nilalagay nyo na pampaalsa? ba diba, Pag na, na, na mix mo siya, you need to leave muna for a few minutes or 15 minutes or overnight. Tapos yung dough mo ay lalaki. Aalsa siya. So, anong nilagay mo doon? So, we have yeast. Okay? Naglalagay tayo ng active yeast. Baking powder. Okay. So, yeast is that one, that uh, type of fungus, and it is classified under, uh, syempre, um, it's a fungi. It is important in the, anong tawag doon kasi yung process? Fermentation, yan. Fermentation process of making alcoholic drinks like wine, liquor, 
Uh, it is also involved in leavening the dough during baking process para aalsa siya. 30. <clears throat> a woman cannot bear a child because of a defective fallopian tube. However, a modern technological process could help her bear a child through the union of ovum and sperm inside a test tube. This process is called love. So, malamang in the choices, hindi siya test tube. Kasi test tube is the material. is a laboratory equipment. Also, hindi naman sa tubal ligation. Kasi ilaligate naman yun. So, mamili ka sa in vitro fertilization or in vivo fertilization. So, the correct answer is IVR or in vitro fertilization. Wala naman yatang in vivo fertilization. Okay? Bakit hindi siya makakabear ng child? Because <clears throat> uh, fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube. Diba? Kaya kung defective ang fallopian tube mo, you cannot bear a child. Kasi hindi sila nag-meet. Okay? Fertilization will not... I mean... Yeah, fertilization will not happen kung defective yung fallopian tube. So, <clears throat> however, because of modern technological process, uh, that woman will be helped. Bear a child by anong gagawin? Itong IVR na to. Paano ang IVR? Ito. Uh, pukuha sila ng mature egg from, from the woman and then, siyempre, sperm from a man or the husband. So, the union of this ovum and sperm takes place outside the organism. So, sa test tube, okay? Or sa laboratory. So, it usually happens in the test tube or in the laboratory. Kaya tinawag nila minsan na test tube baby. So, pag na-fertilize na yung egg, ayan, next stage is embryo culture. I-testing muna nila kung mabubuo ba siya. Okay? <clears throat> and then, freezing excess embryos. Then, after that, piliin nila. Kasi maraming na ano din eh. Uh, let's say, kukuha sila sa'yo ng egg na apat o anim or sampu. Para ano, more chance of, of uh, success. Tapos, i-mix, i-fertilize nila yan. Tapos, pipiliin din nila yung pinaka-healthy among those fertilized egg. Kaya nga, diba, uso na yan kung, let's say, kung kailan na yung si Joel Cruz, yung may-ari ng, ano yung pabango sa Philippines, lahat ng kanyang eight na anak ay galing sa IVR. Pero iisa naman ang, ang nanay nila. <clears throat> When we say isa ang nanay nila, isa ang donor ng egg. So, uh, lahat yun galing sa bakit kambal-kambal-kambal. Kasi pwede naman. Dito pa lang sa, sa process na to, pwedeng dalawa ang i-implant mo doon sa surrogate mother. So, pwedeng piliin mo yung isang lalaki, isang babae. Kaya usually, uh, <coughs> fraternal twins. Isang babae, isang lalaki. Minsan, hindi magkamukha. I mean, kasi hindi naman sila identical. Okay? Pwede ring tatlo kung kaya ng surrogate mother. Tapos, pwede yan i-freeze. Let's say, later on, after two years, after five years, kung gusto mo ulit, sa ano, o, oh, pwede ring kukuha ulit ako ng dalawa. Ganon. Meron nga yung ano eh yung <clears throat> yes mahal ang IVF kasi sabi ni Joel Cruz yung nagastos daw niya sa walong anak niya ay nasa 52 million pesos doon sa walong anak. Pero meron doong hindi twins yung kasi siyempre siguro hindi nabuhay yung isa kasi hindi naman laging successful yan. <clears throat> okay? So ganyan yun. Then pipili sila ng surrogate mother. Surrogate mother, yung healthy, yung maganda ang, ang tawag doon, yung <coughs> uterus, 
kasi doon i- sa lining doon i-implant yung dito etong mga frozen na to. Meron nga yung news dati na ano eh uh, bago siya nagka nagka cancer naka nagpakuha na siya ng may sakit kasi sila eh that at the age of let's say merong certain age na magkakaroon ka na ng sakit parang ganoon. So before na reach niya yung age na yon nagpa-preserve na siya ng kanila ng kanyang sperm para hindi maapektuhan. So, nagkaroon siya ng anak. Meron pa yung pinanganak na after 30 years, ngayon lang siya binuhay, kumbaga. Kasi pwede kasing i-freeze yung mga yan, yung mga embryos na yan. Halimbawa, si Joel Cruz, kung meron pa siyang naka-frozen doon, pwede pa niyang ano, sasabihin niya, pwede ba ulit akong, meron pa ba akong stock dyan? Parang ganun, di ba? So, pwede magkaroon pa ulit. Kung meron pa. Kung wala na, mag, mag, magpigay ka ulit ng, ng cells, ng sperm, or tapos, namili sa kasi, mamimili ka na doon eh. Kasi ewan ko kung sa ang country, parang Russia or uh, Ukraine, yung mga bata. Kasi doon ay parang legal yata. Ang ganitong IVF. Okay? So, kaya lang, mahal. Marami, marami sa Philippines ang nag avail ng gano'n. Even celebrities, hindi lang nila sinasabi. Okay, halimbawa, si Corina Sanchez, may niwala ka ba na at the age of 50, ng anak siya? Pwede sa kanila yon pero through IVF siguro yon Tapos dalawa pa. ba diba? Tapos lalaki at babae. So, may chance na IVF yon pinag ano lang sila pinag mix sa labas tapos kung hindi naman natin nakitang nagbuntis si Corina Sanchez pwedeng nilagay sa surrogate mother kagaya ng sabi ko wala namang effect sa surrogate mother i mean sa bata kahit sino ang surrogate mother kahit kanino mo siya i-implant ang effect lang noon is only for the nourishment yun lang yung kinakain dapat nung mother surrogate mother dapat puro healthy foods kasi yun yung kakainin din nung bata, mga bata. Okay? So, that is IBF. And after that, pag na-transfer nila yung embryo, ayan na, after 14 days, pe pregnancy test na sila to check kung successful. Kung pregnant na ba siya o hindi pa. Pag hindi successful, ayan, mag inject ulit sila. Pera ulit. Sige, lagay, lagay hanggang maging successful. So, <clears throat> after 9 months, yeah, pwede kahit 50 years old, basta, sabi ko nga, kahit sino, basta capable pa yung uterus nyo na mag-carry ng baby. As a surrogate mother. Okay? Then, yan, papanganak na siya. Kaya, yun, yung best example talaga si Joel Cruz, yung eight na anak niya. Galing lahat sa IVF. <clears throat> so, lahat sila, test tube babies. Pero nagtatanong naman daw yung mga anak niya kung sa- saan yung nanay nila. Eh, pinapakita naman, ito yung nanay nyo. Ah, siguro, pagdating ng panahon, maintindihan nila na kayo lahat ay ano, IVF or test tube babies. Pero uh, biologically, siyempre, tatay naman nila si Joel Cruz. Okay? That's IVF. Next. <clears throat> Ayan. Score. Post your score. Over 10 again. Ang IVF sa isang anak daw, abot ka ng 5 to 7 million pesos. I have a friend here in Dubai na IVF yung anak niya. Kung kilala niyo sa Facebook si Lester Dabon. Yun yung baby niya IVF yun. Pumunta siya sa Russia, sa Russia naman daw. <clears throat> Pagdating mo doon, meron kang mga choices. Saan diyan yung gusto mong maka-pair? Yan, pipiliin mo. Siyempre, hindi naman sila magpo-post kung hindi lahat qualified. Yung mga... Ah, oh, siguro na feature na siya sa KMGS. 
Tapos, yun, titignan mo din kung saan din compatible yung i-donate mo. Itetesting naman nila yan kung compatible ba. Hindi, yan. Halimbawa, kung ako gusto kong magpa-IVS, yung pipiliin ko yung gusto ko yung green eyes, yung blue eyes, blonde, mga ganun, di ba? <laughs> Pero, syempre, genetics, hindi naman natin alam kung dominant or recessive. Ayan, mayroon mamaya yung topic na yan. Yung genes na yun, baka mamaya mas malakas yung genes ng black or brown eyes ko. So, walang lalabas na green eyes. Or mas malakas yung genes ng black hair, so walang lalabas na bland na buhok. Okay? 31. Bamboos, which are considered as the tallest grass, reproduce asexually through extended structures called blank. Paano ba nag-reproduce ang bambu? Ano ba yung tinatanim? Roots ba? Buds, runners, or seeds? Definitely, wala namang seed ang bambu. Answer, C, runners. Runners are slender, ito yung tatawag na extended stems, okay, that put uh, forth roots from nodes, dito sa parang gitna-gitna na space at intervals along its length. And so, bamboos reproduce asexually by cutting these stems and staking them in the soil. 32. Dengue is an infectious disease transmitted by a carrier. This carrier is classified under phylum arthropods, arthropoda, and class blank. O, sino ba ang carrier ng dengue? Di ba? Mosquito. So, saan class kaya sila? O, arachnids, chordates, insecta, monera. So, obviously, Class Insecta. Ano ang pangalan ulit nung ano? Nung mosquito na yun? Uh, Aedes aegypti. Aedes aegypti, yun yung mosquito na nagdadala ng dengue. Okay? So, eto. From Kingdom Animalia, kasi animals naman sila, Phylum Arthropods, Class Insect. Okay? So, ang pangalan niya, Aedes aegypti. So, hindi naman ka lang i-memorize. Sinasabi ko before, yung mga phylum, phylum. Basta alam niyo lang yung kingdom animals. Okay? Halimbawa, sa human being, yun lang yung mga tandaan. Sa human, ano ba ang ating domains? Ito. Yung tax, we call it taxonomy. Taxonomy of living things. Pag sa tao, we belong to kingdom animal yan. Animals. Kasi animals, plantae, protist, yan. Doon tayong nabibilang sa animal yan. Phylum chordates. Chordata. Class, ang class natin is mammals. Class mammalia, order, primates. Ang family natin, homidae, humidae, genus, homo, species natin are sapiens. Kaya tawag na sa atin ay homo sapien or thinking man, yung may isip. Homo sapiens. Thirty-three. <coughs> the branch of biology that deals with the study of animal behavior is called lung. Animal behavior, psychology, taxonomy, ecology, answer, B, ethology.
kasi syempre ang psychology nag study yan ng behavior pero hindi sa animals kundi human behavior. Yun yung uh, role ng mga psychologist. So, ethology is a branch of biological science that deals with animal behavior. Kasi yung ecology, syempre sa environment. Yan, sa relationships. Taxonomy, ito naman ay sa uh, naming and classifying organisms. Yan yung taxonomy. Bak- yung mga, diba, dyan nabibilang yung mga uh, scientific names, yan, phylum, kingdom, yan yung taxonomy of living things. 34. <clears throat> the composition is a process in which a substance is broken to make it useful in other processes. The organisms that are capable of decomposing a substance are called autotropes, heterotropes, saprotropes, or producers. So, looking at the uh, items, i-scrap nyo na dyan yung producers. Kasi producers, mostly sila yung sa plants. Producers, then i-co-compose, i-co-consume sila ng consumers. So, sino naman ang kakain kay consumer? Pag namatay sila, decomposers. But, sino ano ang <clears throat> tawag sa mga decomposers? Are they autotropes, heterotropes, or saprotropes? Correct answer is letter C, saprotropes. So, saprotropes came from the Greek word sapros, which means decaying matter. And trope means nutrients. So, this means this uh, that the food nutrients of these organisms are coming from decaying matter. Kaya yung role ng mga uh, uh, decomposers. Ano yung mga decomposers? Bacteria, fungi. Halimbawa, pag namatay ang tao, syempre, kakainin siya ng mga decomposers, which are bacteria. So, autotropes, sila yung mga producers, like plants, algae. Heterotropes, sila naman yung mga consumers, tagakain ng autotropes. So, we have herbivores, carnivores, omni. Omni naman kung both. Both, I mean, uh, herbivores, mga kumakain ng plants. Carnivores, kumakain ng meat. Omnivores, kumakain ng both plants and meat. Okay? So, we have primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers. And then, last are the saprophytes or saprotropes. 35. <coughs> oh, genetics. Which of the following is true of recessive genes? Recessive genes. Sa genes natin, as I mentioned kanina, meron tayong dominant and recessive genes. Kung ang... <clears throat> father mo ay uh, curly hair, ang nanay mo ay straight hair, pero ikaw na anak ay straight hair. Ibig sabihin, yung genes ng straight hair ay mas dominant kaysa sa curly hair. Si curly hair ay recessive genes. Okay? So the answer here is B. Recessive genes will only have phenotypic expression if they are homozygous. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin na yan? Okay, halimbawa, ang dominant genes or alleles is expressed even if it is paired with a recessive allele. Kaya sabi ko, di ba, pag pinagsama mo yung curly and straight hair, ang mas dominante doon ay yung straight. Si straight ang lalabas. Okay? Pero kung 
na i-pair yung dalawang recessive, recessive ang lalabas. Okay? Parehong, ano, alimbawa, uh, curly hair father mo, straight hair si, si, uh, wait, uh, let's say, straight hair si mother, pero yung, let's say, yung lolo mo ay kinky. Tapos ikaw na anak ay kinky hair. So, ibig sabihin, dalawang recessive yung yung genes or alleles ng hairs ng parents mo. Mas dominante yung galing sa grandparents mo na kinky. Okay? Both recessive sila. Yung ibig sabihin ng dominant and recessive. Kaya, yan yung mga namamana. Sa parents or yung mga anak nyo, makikita nyo kung ano yung minana nila. And malalaman mo din kung anong genes ang dominante, ano yung genes mo ang, ang recessive. Okay? So, in, in, with regards to, to genetics kasi, dominance and recessiveness, meron tayong genotype and phenotype. Okay? Ang genotype is the organism's genetic information. Tapos, yung physical traits na niya, yun yung phenotype. Sa example ko kanina, yung curly hair, yung straight hair, kinky hair, sila yung mga phenotype. Ang genotype doon is either homozygous or heterozygous. Ito, makikita ito ang <clears throat> to. Kasi sa, sa genetics, pwede mong i-cross yan with the use of the Punnett square. Punnett square ang tawag dito. Alimbawa, ito yung genes ng father, ito yung genes ng mother. Kukross mo yan. So, makikita mo, imumultiply mo lang. Okay. etong capital letter, dominant. Small letter, recessive. So, pag ganito, dominant pa rin yan. Okay. But we call it heterozygous. Hetero kasi hindi sila pareho. Isang dominant, isang recessive. Pag homozygous, yun naman ay ito, itong ito. Homozygous ito kasi parehong recessive. Okay? Ito din, homozygous kasi parehong dominant. Yun siya sabi natin na genotypic, genotype, or genotypic ratio. Okay? Halimbawa, ito sa Punnett square na yan. Ang genes, for example, ay ito nga, yung cur tuloy natin sa curly and ano. <coughs> Let's say, for example, yung small y ay uh, curly kay father. Yung capital Y, yun ay kay mother, which is straight. Okay? Straight hair. O, pinag-combine mo yan. <coughs> Now, for example, eto sa sa mother, eto rin kay father. So kay father, um, curly, oh, dapat ano to eh, small. Okay, let's assume na eto muna para makita ka yung answer. Pag kinumbine mo using the Punnett square, y and y, so dalawang kapital. Ito, small, capital, capital, small, small, small. Parang multiply mo lang siya. Nakuha nyo? Ito, multiply mo dito. <clears throat> This one, i-multiply mo dyan. Ito, dito. Sumunod, ito. We call it alilis kasi ito eh. The chromosomes. So, ibig sabihin yan, 75%, ito, 1, 2, 3, na magiging anak mo ay straight hair. 25% lang ang magiging curly hair. Ito siya. Okay? So, ganyan ang pagkuha sa <clears throat> genetics using the Punnett square. We have mono uh, hybrid crossing, dihybrid crossing. Pag combination siya. Halimbawa, curly hair pointed nose. Straight hair flat nose. Mga ganon. Okay? With the use of the Punnett square sa genetics naman yan. Okay? 36. <clears throat> Which of the following 
describes the habitat of an organism. Ano ba ang tinatawag nating habitat? It is the population of an ecosystem. It is the food supply in a given environment. C, it is a place in the environment where the organisms live. D, it is a community of an ecosystem. Habitat. Pag ginagamit nyo ang word na habitat, anong ibig sabihin ng habitat? Letter. <laughs> Correct answer is letter C. Habitat is a place where a certain or a certain area in the environment where an organism or a biological population lives or occurs. For example, pond. Pond is a place, <clears throat> so it is a habitat for for fishes, for uh, sea, I mean, other plants, other uh, non-living things, yon. So habitat. Ah, thirty-five. Yeah, B. They will only have phenotypic expression if they are homozygous. Diba? Dito kanina, oh. Lalabas lang ang recessive kung parehong homozygous. Ito. Ito kasi is heterozygous. Heterozygous. Ito, homozygous dominant. Okay? Homozygous dominant ito. Kaya, uh, ang lalabas pa rin dyan is straight hair, parang ganon. So, kumbaga, eto din, heterozygous dominant pa din kasi merong malaking letter. Eto din, merong malaking letter. So, straight hair pa din yan. Eto yung curly hair lang, recessive. Kaya, ang recessive, lalabas lang siya kung may ka-pair siyang pareho niyang weak or recessive gene. And we call it homozygous pag pareho. Okay. 36 is letter C. Next, 37. <clears throat> Which of the following pairs of body parts is considered homologous? Homologous. Answer, letter A. When we say homologous structures, ito yung uh, pair of body parts that is considered as uh, pareho sila ng structure uh, and origin. Kaya, alimbawa, yung kanina, yung human arms and the seals flipper, ito, sa drawing. Okay? Seals, flipper, and human arm. So, pareho sila ng structure. Okay? Kaya tinawag siyang homologous. Yung kab kasama ng homologous ay analogous. Okay? Ang, uh, ang, okay, nakuha nyo na. Ang homologous structure, yung pareho. Kahit hindi sila pareho ng function. Pero pareho sila ng, ng <coughs> structure. Parang nung sa frog, bakit frog ang ginagamit natin pag sa dissection? Pag nasa nung biology class ninyo. Kasi may resemblance yung yung digest yung sa system ng frog sa human being. Kaya frog ang ginagamit natin kasi para ka na rin tinitignan mo na rin yung sa human being na nandito ang kanyang uh, 
stomach, may intestine, and other parts. Okay? Resemblance siya. So, other one, then, yung bird's wing, tsaka ito, mole's forelimb, dog's front leg, yan. Homologous structure, magkakapareho. Okay? Same pattern of bones. So, I repeat, when you say homologous structures, uh, corresponding in structure and evolutionary origin. Whereas, in analogous structure, eto naman yung mga <clears throat> pareho sila ng function, pareho ng, yes, function, pero magkaiba ang structure. Halimbawa, eto yung sa butterfly, magkakaiba sila ng tsura, di ba, itong sa wings nila. Yung wings ng bird, wings ng insect, wings ng bat. Pero, iisa ang gamit, which is panglipad. Okay? Kaya tinawag na analogous structure. What else? Yung sa lungs natin. Lungs ang gamit natin, pero sa mga fishes, they use gills. So, lungs and gills are analogous structure. Parehong pang hinga pang respiratory, pang breathing. Pero magkaiba ang itsura. As compared with homologous, magkapareho ang itsura, pwedeng magkaiba ang function. Okay? Did you get the difference now? Homologous and analogous structure. 38. <clears throat> This segmented worm is used in the traditional medicine to facilitate anticoagulation. What is this organism? So, when you say anticoagulation, uh, ito yung parang to prevent blood clotting. Nung mga unang uh, medicine, ginagamit ito. Anong wor ano tong segmented worm na ito? So, anticoagulation, blood clotting. And to prevent blood clotting. So, alin dito ang nag may uh, uh, o oh, meron ding blood worm, may leech, may liver fluke, earthworm. Earthworm lang siguro ang i-X mo dyan. So, correct answer is leech. Okay? Si leech, di ba yan yung blood sucker, yung nagsasuck ng blood. It is an aquatic blood sucking segmented worm Kasi formerly, noong wala pang mga modern medicine, ginagamit ng mga physicians ang mga leads to bleed their patients. Thus, facilitating anti-coagulation of blood. Ginagamit nila before ang mga leads na yan sa medicine. Okay? Thirty-nine. In order to determine the cause of infections or infectious disease, a diagnostic test that allow microorganisms to multiply in a medium is performed in a controlled laboratory condition. This test is called what? So, take note, microorganisms na nagmumultiply daw. So, nandun na rin sa question yung sagot, di ba? The answer is microbial culture. Okay? Ito kasi yung, par siyempre, culture, nagko-culture sila, so growing microorganisms such as, let's say, bacteria in a nutrient medium. Okay? It is, is for the purpose of uh, determining the cause of infectious disease or other ailments. So, the culturing that is done in a controlled laboratory uh, ay ginagawa para hindi makontaminate by other organisms. So, we call it microbial culture. Kagaya nung nagka-pandemic, di ba? Kinukuha na nila, nag-testing nila, kinukulture nila para makita nila kung paano nag-grow, paano din siya mapamatay. Paano siya mapag-prevent? We call it culturing, microbial culture. 
40. During what part of the day is carbon dioxide released in plants? Nag-release ba ng carbon dioxide ang plants? O, syempre, baka alam lang natin sa photosynthesis. Di ba, sir, ang carbon dioxide nire-release yan ng animals tapos ginagamit ng ng plants para mag-produce ng oxygen. So, dapat ang nire-release ng plants ay oxygen para gamitin ng tao tapos si tao mag-give off ng carbon dioxide. Diba? That is in photosynthesis. But, number 40, during the evening time, so letter D, <clears throat> During the evening time, uh, nagkakaroon ng respiration process. Hindi na siya photosynthesis. Okay? Because one of the characteristics of organism is the ability to respire. Respiration. Sa gabi naman yun. So, hindi na siya nagpo-photosynthesis sa gabi kasi wala namang sun. Okay? So, since plants are organisms, they undergo respiration especially cellular respiration. That is, plants take in oxygen and they give off carbon dioxide. Okay? Dapat man, <coughs> maano nyo yan, ma-distinguish nyo yung photosynthesis and respiration. Photosynthesis sa araw, with the use of the sun, nagpo-produce sila ni plants ng oxygen para magamit ng tao Pag ginamit ni tao, magigive off siya ng carbon dioxide. But during the evening time or night time, si plants naman ang nag-take in ng oxygen, nagigive off ng carbon dioxide through the process of respiration. Ayan, ito siya. Okay? Okay. Post your score. Oh, very good. May, mga, may 9, 6, 9. Ayan, nagagaling kayo sa biology. Medyo legwak lang sa ano. <laughs> legwak ba? Sa, tawag doon. <clears throat> sa earth science and astronomy. Okay, let's continue. 41. Kaya pa ba? 920 na. <clears throat> Malapit na to. Para tomorrow will be Chemistry naman and physics. 41. <clears throat> what do you call a marine mammal that has a long ivory tusk and well adapted in the tundra biome? Pag tundra biome, ito yung malalamig na places. So, well adapted. Huh? Well adapted. Walrus, whale, polar bear, elephant. So, hindi siya polar bear kasi wala naman siyang long ivory na task. Yung parang pangil. Although, nakaka-adapt naman si polar bear sa tundra bayong. Malamang hindi rin elephant. So, correct answer is walrus. Okay? Ito yung itsura ng walrus. Okay? Walrus is a marine mammal. Hindi rin siya whale kasi uh, <clears throat> or has a long ivory tusk nakagaya ng sa parang hindi naman siya elephant but uh, well adapted in the tundra biome because of its thick skin. Makakapal kasi ang sobrang sobrang makakapal kasi ang skin nila. Kaya kayang kaya nilang mabuhay dito dyan sa, sa, sa tundra biome. Okay? Polar bear as I mentioned uh, they also adapted in the tundra not because of the thick skin but because of their thick hair. Makapal, kaya makapal ang ano nila, hairs ng mga polar bear for uh, to adapt or to adjust to the, the environment. Okay? 42. What are the two chemical factors that cause decomposition? 
let's say sa ano sa human body putrefaction and respiration putrefaction and mitosis autolysis and putrefaction autolysis and photosynthesis so malamang ex mo na yung may photosynthesis kasi decomposition niyan ang photosynthesis pag produce ng food ng plants respiration what uh, mitosis hindi na rin yan bakit ang mitosis ay cell division yun di ba pag 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 divide ng cells para makabuo ng ng tissues then tissues to organs organs to human beings eh we are to- talking about decomposition so x na rin yung b and d so mamili ka sa a and c <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Correct answer is letter C, autolysis and putrefaction. Sa decomposition, especially sa body. <coughs> Sorry. So, during the <clears throat> ang autolysis kasi this is the decomposition of tissues or cells of an organism by autogenous substances such as enzymes okay so this is the breakdown of cells and tissues by the body's own enzymes after that magpuputrefaction na siya when i say putrefaction is the decomposition of organic matter by microorganisms. Kakainin ka na ng microorganisms sa katawan. <coughs> okay? Uh, yung liquefaction of organs, yan sa mga bacteria, acids, gases, and other products are produced which lead to color changes, odors, and bloating. Yan yung putrefaction. Yan yung dalawang chemical factors. And then, decay. Yung decay naman, is skeletalization na siya. Nagiging skeleton ka na. And then, we call it diagenesis kung nagdecompose na rin yung mga bones. Organic bone and mineral matrix get metabolized. Yung mga hindi, usually may mga natitira pa rin bones, yun yung mga matitigas na talaga na mahirap madecompose. Okay? So, the two chemical factors are autolysis and putrefaction. Dito kasi nag-umpisa ang decomposition. Eh yung bones na yan, hindi na siya ano, decay na siya. Okay? 43. <clears throat> Commensalism is an interaction between two organisms whereby one organism is benefited while the other is not affected. This is exemplified by which of the following? So, This is a topic of symbiotic relationships sa sa ecosystem. Okay? Kung maalala niyo yung mga symbiotic relationships, ito yung mga <coughs> commensalism, parasitism, ano pa? Mutualism, predation, competition, mga ganun. So, saan daw dito ang commensalism? Where one is benefited while the other is not affected. Two spif- spiders fight each other for survival. Hindi, kasi pareho silang <coughs> walang nagbe-benefit. Gustong silang dalawa mag-benefit. A flea feeds on the blood of the dog. Hindi rin, kasi nasasaktan yung dog. Ang nagbe-benefit lang is yung flea. A bird following the army ant is able to catch and eat the fleeing insects which are caused by the army ant colony. Pwede. A soaring eagle catches and devours the chick. So, here in the examples, the correct answer is letter C. <clears throat> Bakit letter C? Kasi yung the bird and the army of ant interact by the process of commensalism. Si bird kasi is able to catch and eat the insect caused by the colony of ant. In this case, 
the uh, the bird is benefited because it feeds on the insects na nagpa-follow sa mga ants. Pero yung mga ants, hindi sila affected at all. Okay? Hindi sila affected at all. Kaya commensalism. Kasi yung choice A, anong tawag dito sa choice A? Competition. Kasi nagko-compete sila for survival. Si choice B naman ay parasitism. Bakit? Kasi parasites eh. Gumagamit lang sila. Pero kawawa, na- naapektuhan naman yung dog. Kasi blood niya yung kinakain ng flea. And then yung letter D is an example of predation. Kinakain niya. <clears throat> okay, ito yung mga sa- symbiosis ang tawag dito or symbiotic relationship. Ecological relationship between organisms of different species. Uh, mutualism. Pag mutualism naman, parehong nagbe-benefit. Like humans and gut bacteria. Si gut bacteria nagbe-benefit kay human. Si human nagbe-benefit kay gut bacteria. Kasi meron din mga good bacteria na nasa katawan. What else? <clears throat> Uh, commensalism ito. One benefits, the other is unaffected. Okay? Ayun, example kanina. Parasite, parasitism. One benefits, other is harm. Ayun. Yun nga, yung example. Tick and dogs. Ano pa yung mga other symbiotic relationships? Predation. Yung kinakain mo. <laughs> na harm. Competition, kung nagko-compete sila, sila for survival. Okay? 44. The interrelation between the physical and biological components of the environment is called Okay, very easy number. That's, that's ecosystem. Okay? Kanina, we define habitat. Yung habitat, yun lang yung place. Okay? Kung saan nakatira ang uh, living and non-living things. But in ecosystem, meron silang interrelation. Okay? It is a condition whereby physical, the abiotic community, and biological, the biotic components are interrelated. Okay? Meron silang relationship. So, it is, that is ecosystem. <clears throat> okay? Yung pagkakaiba niya sa habitat. 45. A forest suffered from wildfires. However, the remains are still considered to be viable. Five years later, trees and other plants are seen growing in the forest. This condition is called primary, secondary, tertiary, quarterly ecological succession. We call it B, secondary succession. Okay? Ecological succession kasi ang tawag ay dyan, sa natural recovery or restoration of a damaged ecosystem. So, we call it ecological succession. We're in basically two types lang siya. Ito, primary and secondary. Wala ng tertiary, wala ng quarterly. Okay? So, X na tong dalawa. Now, in, in the choice B, secondary succession There are remnants or remains of the previous ecological community that siguro nag-develop in another community, succeeding the previous one. Kaya kahit nasunog yung forest, five years later, marami rin tumubo. So, pero hindi na yung original. Kasi may mga remnants pa doon. May mga remains of previous ecological community. So, we call it secondary ecological succession. Sa primary succession, walang remains, walang remnants of the previous community. 
Okay. Instead, there is initial establishment or development of an ecosystem. Okay. Nag, nag change na siya. Okay. Wala nang kumbaga ito, yung forest nung nasunog siya, wala na. Wala nang tumubo, wala nang ano, talagang kalbo na siya, uh, nasunog na. Okay? <clears throat> so baka pinatay na ng buildings, ayan. So that's primary and secondary succession. Makikita niyo naman eh, secondary means pangalawa. Pangalawang batch ng nabuhay, parang gano'n. 46. <clears throat> the term used in showing the feeding connections among all the living things is called energy pyramid, water cycle, nutrition cycle, food web. Feeding connections. Siyempre, hindi siya water cycle. Since baka nakita nyo feeding, baka pwede pa ang nutrition. Pwede rin ang energy pyramid. Food web. Okay? But here kasi, connections. Connections among all the living things. So yung feeding connections among all the living things, we call it 46 as food web. Letter D. Food web. <clears throat> okay? Now, there are two kinds of feeding connections of, or when I say feeding connection kasi ito yung food transfer. Kinain ni ganito, si ganito, pero ito naman, kinain ni ganito. So, transfer yung energy. So, when we say food chain, isa lang siya. Starts siya sa producer. Always nag start sa producer plants. Primary consumer yung unang kumain. So, dito, nakuha ni grasshopper yung karamihan ng energy from the producer. Tapos, si frog, kinain niya si grasshopper. Pero hindi na yung buong energy from producer ang nakain ni frog. Pakonti ng pakonti. So, si snake, kinain naman niya si frog. Si hawk, kinain niya si snake. Then, namatay si snake, kinain ng decomposers. So, yung one chain na yan, we call it food chain. Pero ang food web, yan, interrelated na sila. Meron ng connection. So, alimbawa, si grasshopper, kumain siya ng berries. Pero si, minsan si grasshopper, nagpipid din siya dito kay plantain. Tapos, sino pa? Si grain fly, butterfly, yan, kainan. Kain ni ganito, ganyan. Okay? So, the, the feeding connections or food transfer is what we call as food web kung you are considering all the living things. Pero pag itong isang straight lang na yan, we call it a food chain. Okay? Single path pala yan. So if there is a single path of food transfer, we call it food chain. Pero kung yung mga food branches out <clears throat> in different directions, creating a web, parang web siya, web-like structure of who eats whom, we call it as food web. 47. In simple hypothetical system consists of the following. Si worm daw, siya ang primary consumer na nag-feed sa cabbage. Si cabbage ang producer. Siya yung taga nagbigay ng pagkain. As small passerine birds feeding on the worms are the secondary consumers and the lion act as the tertiary consumer. A farmer arrives and sprays pesticides, killing all the caterpillars. So, saan galing ang caterpillars? Siyempre sa worm. What will happen to the organisms in the ecosystem? Pag namatay yung worm. Lahat ng worm namatay. Take note, ah, hypothetical system, ecosystem. Hypothetical is parang, kutpari lang, parang ganun. 47, correct answer is, definitely, syempre, the lion will die. 
Yung passerine birds will thrive, hindi na mabubuhay yung bird. The cabbage will wit and die. Hindi ah, mas mabubuhay siya kasi namatay na yung mga worms. Inesprehan siya ng pesticides. The worms will still reproduce. Hindi na kasi pesticide na yun eh. So definitely, mamatay si lion kasi wala siyang makakain na bird. Tama? Kasi wala nang bird. Kasi wala naman ng worm. Kasi pinatay ni farmer ang mga worms by means of spraying pesticide. Okay? So in that hypothetical situation, it shows that the passerine birds feeds on the worm. So when the worm dies, the bird dies also. And so, eventually, the lion will die because the lion feeds on the passerine, passerine birds. Okay? 48. <clears throat> Red tide is caused by the increase in the number of planktons in the sea. What particular marine organism is affected by these planktons and causing detrimental effect on humans? Bakit may red tide? Ano ba ang kinaka Bakit maraming namamatay sa red tide? Anong kinakain nila? Is it a fish, mollusk, arthropods, corals? Walang sasagot ng fish ha kasi hindi naman fish ang ang cause ng red tide. Mali, pag fish ang sagot nyo. Correct answer is B, mollusk. Ano ba kasi ang mga mollusk na yan? Okay. Uh, the most common marine organisms affected by the planktons. Yung planktons na yun na sinasabi, yun yung mga dinoflagellates na sinasabi. That sila yung nagkukos ng red tide are the shellfish, yung mga shells. Pahong, for example. Shellfish is under the phylum mollusk. Mollusk kasi lahat ng shells yan. So, uh, ang red tide, maraming namamatay kasi kumakain sila ng shells. Kasi si shells, sila yung Ayan, uh, tawag doon, <clears throat> na anuhan ng planktons or dinoflagellates as a, an organism, marine organisms. Okay? Hindi fish. Kaya pag red tide, hindi fish ang kinain, kundi shells. Shellfish or shells. Yung mga tahong. Anong English ng tahong? Muscles, right? Tahong yan. So, And all these shells, they fall under phylum mollusca or mollusk. 49. <clears throat> The major concern about global warming arises from increased concentration of blank. Bakit nagkakaroon ng global warming? Ano ang nag-increase? Is it greenhouse gases, acid rain, Photochemical smog, aerosols. Although lahat naman na ito ay contributory sa global warming. Pero ang question is, the major concern is the increased concentration. Saan dito yung pinaka, kumbaga, contributory dahil nag increase ng concentration. Okay, we have greenhouse gases. Okay? So, because global warming is a natural or let's say, sometimes it is a human-induced uh, <coughs> phenomenon increase in the average global temperature of the Earth's atmosphere. Yung tumataas ang temperature. <clears throat> And thus, uh, this abnormal uh, atmospheric condition 
is mainly caused by the greenhouse gases. Saan ba galing yung mga greenhouse gases na yan? Ito yung mga natatrap na heat energy radiating from the Earth's atmospheric system. Okay? So, yung trapping ng heat na yan na hindi makalabas, we call it greenhouse effect. Parang yung greenhouse, di ba, sa plants? Bakit meron silang green na uh, parang bahay to trap para matrap mo yung sunlight, di ba? Para hindi direkta yung heat of the sun sa mga plants. So, parang ganun din. Natatrap yung paglabas ng heat. Kaya we call it greenhouse effect. So, uh, ang example ng mga greenhouse gases ay yung mga carbon dioxide, yan, mga photochemical smog, methane, chlorofluorocarbons. Those are greenhouse gases. Okay? Aerosols, greenhouse gases. 50. The Kyoto Protocol is one of the international assemblies whose advocacy is environmental protection. Thus, this assembly requires the countries to participate in this advocacy by reducing... Siyempre, hindi naman siya photosynthesis, di ba? Reforestation. Hindi mo na kailangan i-reduce ang reforestation. Di ba? So, mamili ka sa greenhouse emission and acid rain. Pwede mo bang i-reduce ang acid rain? Pwede. But, more correct ang letter A, you need to reduce greenhouse emission. Okay? <clears throat> okay? Posture score. Two more batches, then matatapos na tayo. Kunting tiis na lang. Ayan, magagaling. Okay. Fifty-one. <clears throat> a two-lobed endocrine gland shape, shaped like a bow tie, which is located at the neck and regulates the metabolism or re regulates metabolism is known as blank. Pituitary gland, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, adrenal gland. <clears throat> Yung nandito daw sa may neck. Okay, ma'am. Neck. So, we call it thyroid gland. Okay, so the thyroid gland, ito siya, is one of the endocrine or ductless glands which is located at the neck. Okay, ano yung hormones na sinisikrit ng thyroid gland? Thyroxine. And this thyroxine stimulates metabolic rates. Okay, next, 52. A group of researchers formulated a hypothesis that Anthorium flower will grow larger if fish bone is added to the soil. So, gumawa sila ng dalawang experiment. One with fish bone, yung isa walang fish bone. Which data should they be collected to support this hypothesis? Is it the size of the anthorium flower? Length of growing time? Height of anthorium plants? Amount of fish bone in both plants. Yung hypothesis daw nila, sabi nila, mas malaki daw ang bulaklak kung may fish bone. So, therefore, the answer is letter. Kasi yung hypothesis is grow larger. So, ang una mong ikukulit is letter A, yung size of anthorium flower in both plants. Tingnan mo yung size. Kung magkapareho lang ng size ng mga bulaklak nila, anong ibig sabihin? Mali yung hypothesis. Kasi sabi ng hypothesis, mas malalaki daw ang bulaklak kung lalagyan mo ng fish bone yung soil. So, gumawa sila ng experiment, may fish bone, walang fish bone. So, kinuha yung size. 
Pero kung mas malaki ang flower sa may plot na may fish bone, then your hypothesis is correct. Okay? In an experiment, a biologist noticed that bacteria growing on a plate of agar did not grow next to a mold that was growing on the same plate. So he wrote in his report, the mold may be producing a substance that kills bacteria. This statement best described as what? Is it an observation, hypothesis, generalization, or a conclusion? Correct answer is hypothesis. Bakit hypothesis? Nag-guess lang siya. Bakit nag-guess siya? Kasi may word doon na maybe. Okay? And that maybe signifies that the statement is uh, ano lang siya, scientific guess lang siya. Diba? So, so much so that there is a basis in formulating such hypothesis. So, sabi niya, the bacteria died because of the presence of the mold. Pero hypothesis lang niya yun. Kasi maybe ang sabi niya. Okay? 54. Which of the following parts of the microscope does not belong to the group? <laughs> Lahat ba kayo nakakita na ng microscope? So, surely naman. Pero lahat ba kayo nakagamit na ng microscope? Nakahawak na ng microscope? So, the answer here is letter. Is it arm, condenser, body tube, stage? B, condenser. Bakit condenser? Let's try uh, to look at the microscope. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Eyepiece, coarse adjustment, fine adjustment, inclination joints, body tube. Stage. <coughs> ito ang stage. Ito. Lahat ng yan are mechanical parts. Okay? Yung condenser, mirror, revolving nose piece, objectives, they are called illuminating part. Yung gagamit ng light, uh, ng mirror, kasi sisilip ka eh. Diba? mag enlarge ng object, magmamagnify ng object. Kaya in the question, which does not belong to the group? Kasi si arm, si body tube, si stage are the mechanical parts. Si condenser ang illuminating part. Okay? So, hopefully, lahat nakahawak na ng microscope. 55. Which of the following structures are found in plant cells but not in animal cells? Sit 1 and 4, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 2 and 4. Parang din kanina sa eukaryotic and prokaryotic. Ganun din. Okay. So, pag plant cell kasi, chloroplast, chlorophyll, meron siya. Okay? Pero sa animals, wala silang chlorophyll kasi hindi naman sila nagpo-produce ng food. Plants lang ang nagpo-produce ng food. Okay? So, the correct answer is 1 and 4. Okay? Let's take a look. This is the animal cell. This is the plant cell. So, kung titignan ninyo, si plant cell, meron siyang chloroplast kasi para sa photosynthesis. Si animal cell, wala. Si plant cell, meron din siyang cell wall. Ito. 
na nag cover Pero si animal cell, wala. So, yun yung dalawa. Animal cells have no cell wall and chloroplast. Okay? Kasi si chloroplast, yun yung ginagamit ni plants sa photosynthesis. 56. When a plant cell is placed in a hypertonic solution, anong mangyayari? Ito yung concept ng hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solution. The plant will expand, will rupture, will shrink, or no effect. Hyper, hypertonic. Diba hyper means sobra? Sobra. Okay. Correct answer is letter C. The plant cell will shrink. Now, pag hypertonics, ano kasi? <clears throat> 40% of solute concentration, 60% na lang ang water. So, when you say hypertonic, higher ang solute concentration kasi 40% than another solution. So, ang mangyayari dyan, water particles will move out. Ayan. Lumalabas ang water sa cell causing cremation. Kaya si shrink yung cell. Pag hypotonic naman, lower ang concentration. Kaya tignan nyo dito, 10% lang ang concentration. Pero, 90% ang tubig. Okay? So, more uh, the water particles will move into the cell causing the cell to expand naman. Okay? I repeat, pag, pag hypotonic, mag-expand yung cell kasi marami siyang tubig. Pag isotonic naman, same lang siya. <clears throat> okay? Remains constant. Walang movement. So, walang, walang effect. Okay? 57. Which of the following organisms is included in the kingdom? Plantae. Plant. Magnolidae, fungi, protozoa, prokaryos. So, syempre hindi siya fungi. X na yan. Kasi fungi is another kingdom yan. Protozoans hindi din. Diba? So, prokaryos or magnolidae. Correct answer is A, magnolidae. Ang magnolidae kasi parang ano yan eh, mat yung puno, uh, ang tawag doon, evergreen, evergreen trees. So, siya ang kingdom uh, plantae. Si fungi, they belong to kingdom fungi. Si protozoa, sa kingdom protis naman siya. Si prokaryotes, like bacteria, they belong to kingdom monera. Monerans. Kasi obvious din naman ito o fungi, protozoa, prokaryos. 58. The molecule that allows plants to capture energy from the sun. Hmm. Ito yung main catalyst sa photosynthesis. Ano siya? Yung nagka-capture ng uh, energy from the sun. We have... <clears throat> Siyempre, letter C, chlorophyll. Okay? Chlorophyll is always the link between living things and sunlight. So, when you say chlorophyll, it is the pigment that acts as catalyst in photosynthesis. Kung walang chlorophyll, plants cannot produce, cannot manufacture food, their own food. Which of the following organism is classified as fungus? Fungus. Amoeba, yeast, bacteria, magnolia. So, pag ako, ikukross ko na si bacteria. Kasi iba ang fungi, iba ang bacteria. Ikukross ko na din si amoeba. So, may mili ka sa yeast and magnolia. 
So, correct answer is <coughs> letter B, yeasts. Okay? Because yeast is classified under the kingdom fungi. Fungus yung yeast. Ano pa? Yung mga mushroom. Fungus ang mga yon. Amoeba belongs to kingdom protist. Si bacteria, sabi ko kanina, si monera. As si magnolia, this is a plant. So, nasa ano siya? Kingdom plantae. Okay? 60. What organ system are involved when a chicken flees upon sensing the presence of a snake? Anong ginamit niyang organ system? Skeletal, nervous, muscular, digestive. 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Lumipad daw si chicken kasi na-sense niyang may parating na snake. Sige nga, analyze nyo nga yan. Saang organ system ang ginamit niya? Or alin sa mga organ systems ang ginamit niya? Answer 1, 2, and 3. Okay? Bakit? O, tingnan natin. <clears throat> Bakit lumipad si chicken? Kasi natakot siya sa snake. So, kung natakot siya, anong ginamit niya? Nervous. Nervous system. Nervous siya. So, ginamit niya yung two. What else? Lumipad siya. So, nag-move. Ano ang magagamit niyang system pag nag-move? Siyempre, yung bones and muscles. Skeletal and muscular system. So, hindi niya ginamit ang digestive system kasi hindi naman siya kumain. Okay? So, C... 1, 2, and 3. Okay? Okay. Post your uh, uh, score. Okay. Now, <clears throat> actually, 1 to 85 to. Pero stop natin soon ng 60. Kasi it's 9, 10 na. 10 o'clock na pala. So, dapat pala, <clears throat> pag ganitong cases, 8, 9, 3 hours pala itong ganito. So, dapat 25 points lang or 30 points. Okay. Uh, i ano ko na lang itong iba, i-convert i into PDF and post sa group. Then, i-add nyo lahat na ang scores ninyo. Mabot na pala tayo ng 10. Okay lang ba sa inyo? Alam, wala na po-post ng score. <laughs> Alden Richards. <laughs> oh, si Ma'am Rosa Bell, 41. Si Ma'am Joanne, 36. Si Ma'am Marwil, 33. Okay, so kumain na kayo. 35, Ma'am Mara, 39. Si Ma'am Gay. Sir Orlan, 31. Okay, see you again everyone tomorrow for physics naman and chemistry. Sana wag mawawala. <coughs> okay, so good night.